true. Nine people on a panel and just one person yeah, just, speaking. Yeah, just just one. Like okay. that's like the era of digitalization. Or, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello guys welcome to Tube Bar Incorporated welcome to this new episode of Hashtag #ultimate breakdown as you can see we are in of a video podcast kind of session where i am joined with sachin karekar he is the marketing and executive head of head head, uh, head for sports doors yeah. uh, and i am I, i love politics in general politics and economics in general so basically he did his marketing and interest straight away so good thing as far as your video cv is concerned yes. sachin <laughs> we are here assembled for this video podcast session with sachin he's a he's an av- avid follower of politics to be very honest and especially um, international relations and stuff like that especially international relations and stuff like that's the most boring thing i could <laughs> ever tell to a girl like <laughs> well uh, if any lady is watching he might not be that impressive but the stuff that is going to present might be impressive for many of the followers which will watch this podcast we're actually here to discuss a very currently hot topic in international yeah. politics and might be a bit serious but weird in the same prospect as well uh, rohingya muslims yes Uh, a community which is under a lot of uh, problem because of the hostile relations between two countries between two or more countries to be very honest which sachin will explain to us as the time progresses and this this pro- problem is actually been because of certain political or geopolitical issues to be very honest uh, sachin first question what is this issue all about can you explain uh, it in layman terms to the public so uh, and it can be in any language that you wish to talk in so yeah, that's okay i i know i know <laughs> so basically uh, rohingyas is an ethnic group or uh, and a predominantly islamic ethnic group of uh, myanmar uh, based in the rakhine state okay so the rakhine state in myanmar yeah okay so is it near to india near to china yeah in uh, it borders uh, bangladesh in general okay it borders bangladesh yeah. okay and it's uh, also borders chin state which borders in uh, india okay good so with uh, this province this province is actually a uh, point one being it's uh, strategically important so which we will talk later yeah uh and what has happened is that there was certain migration happening from bangladesh uh, to myanmar uh, during the 50s and the 60s when uh, we know bangladesh was a part of pakistan mm-hmm. and uh, and in some way it's uh, the myanmar government says that the whole rohingya muslim community okay. has migrated from bangladesh to the rakhine state Okay. and hence they don't deserve the uh, deserve the citizenship so of so they are accusing the rohingya muslims of uh, migrating, migrating from, from bangladesh, bangladesh in the 50s in the 50s yeah and they are bringing the issue in 2017 <laughs> not exactly that the issue has been uh, in the spotlight from a uh, quite some time actually okay. uh, even in the media spotlight from like uh, 2015 okay uh, the international media spotlight but before that also it was quite an issue over there so it so, required some overacting and overhyping from our certain a man called arnab goswami from republic tv yes, that's why exactly okay. exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> uh, but it's it's not new with arnab na yeah, yeah. <laughs> True. Nine people on a panel and just one person speaking. Yeah, just speaking. Uh, just one. Like okay. that's like the era of speaking digitalization. Or, yeah. <laughs> 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 But yeah. Yeah. Coming back. Coming, coming back, back to Rakhine and Rohingya Muslims in general. So there was some migration, but uh, it was not like ki all all of them are Bangladeshi. It's like just okay. a small portion. Like uh, this can be traced back to the 15th and the 16th century. Oh. Yeah. So Rohingya Muslims have been there from a long time. So. but this uh, but since myanmar does not recognize them has uh, citizens hence they have no passports they don't have any uh, oh. local identity okay so in general they don't have any identity in general identity where in myanmar or by my okay in, in myanmar, myanmar itself okay. so if you don't have any identity if you don't if you, they are technically right now stateless okay like refugees kind of thing exactly so hence uh, and uh, recently in 2015 2016 uh there has been from a very long time there has been this separatist movement uh with regards to rohingyas uh that can be traced back to the world war 2 when oh. the muslims rohingya muslims or the muslims in the rakhine state uh were fighting for the british fighting and, for british yeah okay and buddhist uh the buddhist were fighting for uh, the japanese okay and uh, 
in part uh, the muslims were uh, told that they would get their own separate state separate identity but ultimately which did not happen so you can trace back uh, to that point and after that there were a lot of separatist movements and in general what they are saying about separate uh, what uh, kiran rijuju says that in uh, that separatist movements like uh, the which is happening in rakhine and mm-hmm. when rohingyas migrate here is quite a serious issue it is that but i i being a left liberal <laughs> and uh, in general you can you can blame all of them for a certain few like you can blame like the whole box for just one bad apple yeah right? exactly that's that's also is that the thing that's happening blaming the whole box for just one bad apple yeah kind of okay yeah so if they were given if rohingya muslims were given some role in dunkirk i i guess they would have got some better <laughs> exposure and better uh, platform no, to deal no, with problems no 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 one no one in dunkirk got uh, exposure other than the white people there. yeah oh <laughs> that was some serious was some serious, serious banter there for christopher yeah. nolan right there i'm sure uh, if this reaches to christopher nolan he might not be happy <laughs> uh, moving on so how is how this how has this issue reached india and so basically how is, how is, uh, how is, basically these people have been facing atrocities from the myanmar army and the locals okay. local buddhists in general okay. uh, who have been burning these villages uh, and these people are uh, migrating to india okay. and uh, Bangladesh. Okay. Bangladesh decided to accept these refugees in the last 2-3 uh, weeks itself. Um Bangladesh itself has got a uh, influx of more than 3 lakh 50,000 refugees. And it's already the, has yeah, an influx. Yeah, and oh. it already had an inf- uh, had like 3 lakh 50,000 refugees. So oh. like it's like 7 more than 7 lakh refugees in Bangladesh itself. That's and sad. we are looking at like 40 50,000 refugees in India. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's like that's that's uh, why but india is not ready to accept them there are multiple reasons for it like you okay. just can't blame the modi government for it like yeah. al- although i being again being a left <laughs> liberal might <laughs> accuse them a bit actually, of that yeah, yeah, i am and people generally <laughs> tend to take my stance on like uh, me being like something not uh, too much into the yeah, right wing of tu to sala anti modi hai tu bhi modi ke side se bolta hai kaise bolta hai anti modi nahi hai main what was good that good Yeah, yeah kind of good. kind of kind of kind okay. of okay uh the thing is this uh, uh myanmar myanmar is like a gateway to southeast asia which is right. like uh which is going through the same economic growth that uh, india is growing the boom right like uh and our look east policy and uh, we can't disappoint myanmar because we have like these two states have been closer and the yeah, we've already disappointed myanmar courtesy sunil chetri and eugene sinling do yeah uh, <laughs> you have to bring in the football <laughs> yeah i had yes. to bring <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, anyways yeah. politicians are not yeah affected. politically we have been do, like they uh, not be done with ong uh, with the key position that ong san suu kyi is yeah right and True. she has been very close to india in general so we can't disappoint first of all myanmar Myanmar becomes a strategically important location okay. uh, so like like what we were seeing in the Caspian report a shout out to the Caspian, Caspian report. report guys yeah yeah you have done an amazing job with your research <laughs> you'll find the link in the description so if you want to hear more about the Myanmar issue in general about the strategic and army yeah. wise locations you can see that video and yeah you have to you should yeah. see that video iska matlab ye nahi hai ki hamara video skip karoge but yes, still but, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah so basically uh, strategically important for india okay. uh, in like the doklam crisis and uh, has has brought in this thing ki how how uh, uh important this silguri corridor corridor yeah. like that 27 km corridor how how uh, like it's it's this 27 km corridor that connects us to the north east so you can understand how important that place is 20 suggest 27 km of a vast uh, country corridor corridor, yeah. corridor and it's connecting us to like nearly uh, like the whole Seven of north states, east yeah. Yeah. yeah right true and sikkim as well yeah sikkim <laughs> eight yeah. streets yeah. Uh, i beg your pardon yeah. so uh, so so you, uh, so we need some alternative routes so True. there is this port in uh, port called sitbe which is strategically important for both india and china oh ha huh. uh, like with, from sitbe uh, what uh, china is planning is a uh, oil pipeline like ev- like international politics is just about oil pipelines so like तेल तेल और क्या दैट वॉज अ बैड वन बट सो इन जनरल सो या दिस ऑयल पाइपलाइन टू कुमलिंग इन चाइना चाइना या ओके सो 
and india plans to create an alternative route to aizawal in general the northeast uh, via sitwe itself i so like jitna like, sa facilities milna chalu hoga aizawal ko nice so <laughs> 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 from kolkata to sitwe uh, okay. sitwe and then aizawal becomes an alternative route for so us through the well. sea it goes yeah okay yeah, alternative trade route okay like if uh, if there is some some crisis like doklam or something where uh, silguri corridor might be attacked Okay, so basically the thing is, so we can't actually we can't disappoint Myanmar by like taking in refugees ah, by this by going in the uh, in the United Nations saying like okay, uh, you can't Myanmar just call some like state terrorist and just like that, <laughs> <laughs> except Pakistan, <laughs> except Pakistan. <laughs> except Pakistan. Uh, no, but uh, as far as this situation is concerned, then why don't we see to it that even Bangladesh is cooperating? Then what's wrong with Bangladesh? Why is Bangladesh being quiet in this all this fiasco? So basically, uh. basically uh, like can't sark put pressure on bangladesh no bangladesh has taken refugees yeah. uh, they have accepted the refugees but let's be honest uh, when a lot of these refugees come into india uh, like when we are sitting in a room in mumbai we don't get affected by it we can mm. completely say that this is a human rights issue we should care about people we should uh, spread is it referring to my short film <laughs> is it referring to my short film <laughs> put that description as well, like you made me send that short film to everyone oh man uh, yeah. marketing scenes yeah. <laughs> i know it well uh, so basically what um, yeah so basically when these people come into these villages these smaller okay. villages when they migrate to these border side villages you are you are destroying the local economies there like we we still india is not it's it's a developing country it's like a few, probably becoming going to become a future superpower but uh, let's uh, let's be honest we are still a poor country yeah, and uh, these economies in these villages will get affected even if like you bring in 40000 more people true yeah Very so true. you definitely wouldn't want that to come into the picture right right hmm. so that becomes an issue and bangladesh is like bangladesh is has a lot of uh, opportunity to grow but st- still we are uh, still it's a poor country right and yeah. uh, it, it has a very high population to, yeah. uh, it's a, it high has population, a very high population yeah. density high population density so yeah, that's a very big problem yeah, there yeah and uh, bangladesh has has its own uh, own uh, internal crisis that they have to solve in f- uh, solve first then like they can look at rohingyas and rakhine so basically right now what is happening is uh, out, out of this whole uh, international politics and your own local national politics and all that stuff uh this these people rohingya muslims are being trapped and that's and the whole point there. Yeah. but coming to internal politics is myanmar also doing something regarding uh, usage of army or something is they are, are myanmar people or the are myanmar authorities trying to uh, you know see to it that the life of rohingya muslims is uh, one hell of a life that they're living in myanmar uh, is myanmar trying some internal politics there is there something inside of myanmar course well? of course uh, this has been a uh, very an issue from a very long time okay so uh, uh, these uh, buddhist uh, in uh, in myanmar and in general in the rakhine state mm-hmm. don't get along well with uh, muslims oh uh, yeah something that is uh, similar to in a lot of countries yeah. but <laughs> yeah uh, but they are not in general getting along well with them okay so you are just not this getting this along well with somebody it's like like they are yeah, most peace loving uh, people see. every time <laughs> and they are not But getting along yeah. with somebody it's like kind of it's, a shock for a kind of a shock for anyone anyone anyone, anyone around yeah, the world like, like this is not getting along like we, yeah. we we talk about the teaching of gotam buddha and uh, the thing is you can you can blame certain few bad people for like the or for the whole community yeah, same like, thing yeah. you can bad uh, you can blame a single apple for uh, yeah. the entire box for for a single apple yeah, like, same thing Huh. same thing but uh, coming to that point is just religious minorities or is just religious communities the reason for political instability in a region is religious thing now becoming a becoming a factor for political infiltration or political uh, you know awareness to be spread along regions so, internationally to be very so is yeah. is religious dominance the reason so, for having political stability nowadays so basically what has happened in the last 10 years the influence of the left and the liberal and the progressive mm-hmm. communities has grown tremendously True. like we in i think so the uh, cu- uh, like not from even the technological point of view but the cultural changes that we yeah, are uh, seeing in the last 10 20 years wherein uh, probably 20 years ago uh, something like uh, gay marriage or 
uh, LGBT Q community, uh, we would always have a negative opinion about right. them. But then this there is this huge transition that we have seen in that one topic itself, and this is the huge transition which we are seeing. Like twenty years ago, weed was a drug. Now <laughs> we are looking at we, uh, a lot of the countries are legalizing weed. So you, you see that transition in like priorities, every, yeah, priorities. priorities. <laughs> uh, you see that progressiveness in like happening in every country, and a lot of the con- conservative people are still not ready for that. Oh, that huge leap forward. True. Uh, so someone, okay, someone would be someone from China or someone who is following the Chinese. Po- <laughs> this would. Get yeah, we here. got that. But uh, yeah. regarding this, regarding this international geopolitical dominance as such, if so we if are seeing that transition happening, like the right is growing, and this has always been this, like the right wing communities grew in the nineteen thirty thirty s. Then late, oh, uh, then we saw this shift towards left. Like a lot of co- countries became left leaning. Then that we see that shift. So that shift will co- uh, go, come and go, come and go. And uh, the that depends sh- on governments and how they idealize or yeah, yeah. how, how the they, philosophy is going yeah, on. Yeah, philosophy like, is going on. Yeah. Yeah. First you become boring, then you park the bus, but then that's okay. Uh, yeah. If you know what I mean. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> that just shifted uh, in a whole parallel universe yes, if you are for following uh, politics or sports. Yeah, exactly. exactly <laughs> that's exactly. like a whole different kind of exactly. world we just switched yeah. into. But nevertheless, uh, so what you're saying is unless and until political philosophies are changed, you are not going to see a d- difference in trend. Uh, is this what you want? Is no, this your opinion? This is a new trend which is happening. Yeah, like you, religions could target your own religion. Hai, bhai, apna religion ka no, you le lo. will see this trend for the next 10 years. You will see that trend. Like, uh, and when you see that side effects, the bad effects of it, like, uh, let's say Donald Trump. Now, people are people in uh, USA, like, even if you say Hillary Clinton won the popular vote by 2.5 <laughs> million votes. But still, uh, still, you have to see that a lot of people still voted for Donald Trump. Yeah, exactly. And now, now you see Donald Trump doing these things like uh, hiring and firing people. Basically, <laughs> what every each and every IT company in India is doing right yeah. now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so By the way, he's an engineer, so he feels the yeah. I feel the pain. <laughs> you IT computer guys, uh, I feel the pain. Although I'm an electronics engineer, but we ultimately IT mein ja ke kaam karte hai. <laughs> he's, Do you see how he's slowly building up his own CV on video? Yes. So like, like, dekh hai, isko dekh ha, sakta hai please, <laughs> please, 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 but coming back to the topic, uh, so basically you see this political trend will be lasting for the next 10 years. Yeah, I'm just saying that 10 years, but maybe 5 to 8 years, but it, it is going to last. We are going to sh- uh, see that shift. Uh, even in India, we are like even being a left, liberal, progressive, whatever, liptard, aptard, <laughs> prostitute, whatever <laughs> you call me. Uh, but I have to acknowledge that that the government, uh, BJP government is going to come back into the power. Okay. But what Amit Shah is saying, like 300 plus seats or something like that. Not possible, I guess. I don't know. It's, so, it's a, a cricket match. Pe bhi nahi hota re, parliament mein but this is an era of 2020. So oh, <laughs> good one, good one, good yeah. one. So, but, so, let's see. Like, uh, it's it's a possibility. So, so considering so considering now, if you are a Rohingya Muslim, you are you are stranded in Myanmar. Yeah. You want to get get out of that country. Which would be the practical and the most ideal choice for you as a Rohingya Muslim to go to? Stay I, in I Bangladesh think. as it was your native place? Go to India? So, ba- so no, 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 no. Let, me, let me complete the option. Bangladesh was not the native place. No, no, no. Bangladesh was not no, the native place. No, no, no. I got it. Apparent. Only apparent. Apparent. Yeah. yeah. So, not even for, apparent. Yeah. It was not a native so place. So, four yeah. options. If you are given four options if you are a Rohingya Muslim. Hmm. First, stay in Myanmar and face all the rots, struggle against it and prove your point. Okay. That's not not a possibility. You are you okay. Not killed. a possibility. Okay, omitted. Second option: go to Bangladesh, which was your apparent place where you came from. No, it wasn't. But then, uh, if 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 given an option, would you go to Bangladesh? Because see, I financially so they are not good. They're but struggling. Then, but then still, uh, still at least Bangladeshi people and un- people understand the problem here, and uh, at least like, at least oh, uh, uh, the government and uh, in Bangladesh is understanding it and. I hope like Bangladesh does does uh, handles this crisis very well. So third option, India. India is not a possibility because you will be uh, the way the government is uh, working this out. I think so. We, they so, will be thrown out. So if you are a Rohingya Muslim and if you are not looking at the political side of it, if you are just a human being looking out for opportunities to have a good life, 
Where India. would you prefer to go? India, China, India, India. Why India? India because uh, because it's uh, first of all it's close enough. Second of all, uh, it's uh, it's a it's a growing country. It's a uh, highly developing country. So you can get work opportunities. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Op- there are endless opportunities, and I am pretty sure like I am expecting the Modi government like. before 2019 will be focusing more on the northeast because uh, northeast has been a weak point for the bjp government in general true and true. if they want to cross that oh. 300 plus mark uh, i think so uh, i think so like we uh, all the, the most of the political parties in india uh, have actually uh, quite a lot neglected the northeast like uh, there have been a lot of false promises coming in and all that stuff so if the bjp government wants to come back into power in 2019 i think so, and if they want a 300 plus uh, target i think so looking northeast is very good like you prove your point uh, bjp proves its point that it's not based on uh, their agenda is not just communal but it's it's a progressive it's a development based agenda and uh, yeah, that's it because and uh, other states become quite a risky option uh, tamil nadu becomes a very risky option because in tamil nadu the local politics has a lot more influence than True. the national politics true, true. uh kerala itself is uh, seeing its own share of uh, bjp problems uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh karnataka seems good because uh, that uh, that bad phase for bjp yeah, karnataka Durapa. has gone yeah that that has uh, that shift i see that happening like karnataka could be a place where bjp could come back in power okay Gujarat, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh. It's already BJP. It's all saffron. It's, it's all saffron. Yeah, that's like it. Saffron is saffron is the color. Yes. In uh, the central and yeah, northern states. Yeah. Even so even Nitesh Kumar would be probably wearing a saffron. Yeah, yeah, that's also true. Airport, that's also yeah. true. And uh, even Bihar is near to Myanmar, so. <laughs> 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 so that might be a strategic Ooh. point as well. Yeah. Well, so that that's the whole point. If you are a Rohingya Muslim, or if you are a person supporting Rohingya Muslims, India India can be the best place to come for refugees, and that can also be a political stronghold for a party like BJP if it wants to come back to power again, and which is looking possible considering 2019 elections. That's what Sachin is saying. Sachin, thanks a lot for being a part Thank of you. this political podcast, and uh, that's it from our side. Keep watching this space for more. and follow sports dose on facebook twitter, twitter instagram and follow me sachim93 uh, on twitter <laughs> on twitter uh, facebook and uh, so finally okay. sachim's cv is complete by the end yes. of this video <laughs> my social media profile is also there right <laughs> So if you have any if you have any opinions to share please drop them in the comment section and yeah. it would be a very good thing to yeah, interact with the public Yeah if you have anything uh, if you really like the podcast if you want us to change anything because we are going to come out with a lot of new stuff Yeah sure sure uh, no problem So please do let us know Yeah please uh, do let us know and ignore the backdrop because this is the first video wo pankha band ho jayega ek din thoda <laughs> ruko pehla video hai yes. So please don't start bombarding with the pankha wala thing behind yeah. uh, like the video share it comment it whatever you want to do with the video just do it <laughs> just do it but do something man apne hum log ko marketing ka problem hota hai please please share <laughs> like comment subscribe. and um, crossing 1000 subscribers is a really big deal so thanks a lot for supporting guys uh, like share comment subscribe everyday stuff everyday stuff and uh, as always hail victory One, two, three,